Now we're going to do about the same thing, just use some different terminology, the relative extrema. That is the plural for extremes, and relative meaning not the highest point, but the highest point in a certain area. For example, on this graph, there should be arrows, meaning that it keeps going up forever. So there really is no highest point. But a relative extrema means, is there a high and a low? Again, I think about riding a roller coaster. I'm going up, and I hit a high point, and I go down. I hit a low point, and I go up, and I hit a high point, and so forth. So these high points, even though they might not be the highest point on the ride, they are highs because I'm fixing to change and go down. So a relative extrema on this first graph would be at this point because I'd hit a low, this point because I would go up and then I'd turn back down. So those would be what I would call relative minimums, and that would be a relative maximum, even though it's not the highest point on the graph. Okay. Um, let's see if we could have some values. So again, the relative extrema is if, you're, again, you're walking along the graph and you reach a peak and then you turn down. So that, this point, would be a relative extrema. Right, going down, 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 down. I didn't change up or down. This one here, I hit a low point and then I kept going. So this would be a relative extrema. In fact, this would be a relative minimum, and this would be a relative maximum. Let's look at these problems that ask us to sketch a graph of the derivative. That is not an easy task. We have to look at what the function is doing. Is it increasing or decreasing? So from here to here, it's increasing. Then we stop. Here to here, it's decreasing. Then we stop. And then it's increasing. Now, these two points would be the relative extrema. And why that's important is that means that the derivative is zero. So if I'm graphing the derivative, it means the value is zero here and about here. All right, well, what does it mean when? this is increasing. That means the derivative is positive. If the function is increasing, the derivative is positive. Well, if it's positive, it means it's above the x-axis. The graph of the derivative is above the x-axis. And if the derivative is negative, that means the graph is below the x-axis. So that means from negative infinity to zero, I'm up here somewhere. And then from zero to about this point, I'm below the x-axis. And then again, I'm increasing, so I would be a positive. So I think it would look something like this. And if you refer to page 259 in your book, problems 45 through 48, they're actually having you to match the graphs and give that a look. But let's look at number 47, all right? Hmm, this part of the graph looks pretty flat. Then we're going down, going down, then we stop. Then it looks like we're going up, up, and then we kind of flatten out. So we have one critical point where the derivative is zero. So the derivative is zero here kind of did my colors backwards, but this blue part, it was kind of flat, kind of constant, but then it was decreasing, so my derivative is negative. And then it looks like I'm increasing here and then kind of constant. So let's see, decreasing means I would be below the x-axis somewhere, and then increasing would mean it's positive so I'm above the x-axis, but this constant part, well, remember the derivative would be zero again, so somehow it's got to go close to zero. This is going to go up, but then it's going to go close to zero, so maybe my derivative looks something like that. Those are challenging problems.
Just give it a look again on page 259. Now we're going to use the calculus to find relative extrema. When we were using the calculus to find whether it's increasing or decreasing, we were really finding what's called the critical numbers. The critical numbers is where the derivative equals to zero or does not exist. That's what we were finding before. We were finding where the derivative was equal to zero or does not exist, and then we put those numbers on a number line. We're going to do pretty much the same exact thing. We're going to determine those critical numbers, and then we're going to determine the sign. So, but instead of finding where it's increasing or decreasing, we're going to actually find the points on the graph where the derivative changed. So let's go through this procedure. I want to find the derivative. I want to set that equal to zero. All right, so my critical number is only three. We don't have any undefined part, right? So put that on my number line. I test my regions. Okay, so that means the derivative was going up and then going down. And I like to draw that because that shows me that that point would be what's called a relative maximum or an extrema, but it would be a maximum since I went up and went down, right? I don't need just the number three. I need to find the actual x and y values. So when x is three, what is y? Now that's on the actual graph. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to evaluate the original function at my critical number of three. And let's remember our order of operations here. That's going to square that. That's going to be 9 and then make it negative. And so I would have a relative maximum on the graph at 315. And let's go back. If you recall, you should know that that is a parabola. And because it's negative, it would look something like this. And this relative maximum would also be the vertex. All right, so again, let's find that derivative. Set that equal to 0. Again, we have two critical numbers. We don't have any values where the derivative or the function is undefined. So those would be my critical numbers. And then testing numbers in each region. All right, so again, we're looking at the derivative and evaluating these. That's going to be positive. That's going to be a negative value. That's going to be a positive value. So what that tells me is, let's see, this part was positive, then we had negative, then we had positive. These are our relative extrema. This would be a maximum. This would be a minimum. All right, so now I need to know the ordered pairs. When x is 0, what's y? When x is 2, what is y? And I have to go back to the original function and evaluate that. So when x is 0, y is 4. And when x is 2, let's see, that's 8 minus 12 plus 4. I believe that is 0. So those would be my relative extrema. And I know that this one is a maximum, and that is a minimum. All right, let's give that one more try. So we put these numbers on a number line. We test numbers to the right and to the left. And we evaluate the derivative at these three numbers. All right, I did not get negative, positive, negative. I got negative, negative, positive. So let's see, that means it went down. It went down again, and then it went up. So at this point, we would have a relative minimum. But here, since it didn't change, the derivative was negative in both accounts. We do not have a relative extrema. So the only one we have is when x is 3. Again, you have to come back up here to the function and evaluate it at that number to figure out what the x value is.
So that's my relative extrema, and I know from this information that it's a relative minimum. All right? This is a different type of function. Let's go ahead and write this in this format so we can more easily take the derivative using the power rule. Now, I need to set that equal to zero. So let's see, I'm going to change those negative exponents to positive. I'm going to add this to both sides to make that positive. And then since I have a fraction, I'm going to cross multiply, take the square root, but don't forget my plus or minus sign. So that's two critical numbers. However, I have a fraction. What value would make that fraction equal to zero? which means what would make that function undefined, and that would be zero as well. You come back up here to the original function, it is also undefined at zero. So I have three critical numbers. That means I have four regions to test. Again, you can pick any number as long as it's in each region. Don't pick the exact critical numbers. And then I have to evaluate the derivative at those numbers. So I'm going to have 1 minus 9 over negative 4 squared. Okay, so let's say I have 1 minus 9 sixteenths. I know that's positive. This is 1 minus just 9 because negative 1 squared is 1. So that's going to be negative. Then I have 1 minus 9. That's also negative. I have 1 minus 9 sixteenths, which is positive. So let's see. It went up, and it went down, it went down some more, and then it went up. So those are my two relative extrema. Here, since it didn't change, it's not a relative extrema. I know this one is a max, and this one is at a minimum. And so I need to evaluate the function at negative 3 and positive 3. So f of 3 and f of negative 3, is going, they're going to give me my relative extrema. I'm going to evaluate the original function at 3. So let's see, that's going to be 3 plus 3 is 6, that's 8. That's negative 3 minus 3 plus 2, that's going to be negative 4. So I have 3, 8 and negative 3, negative 4, those would be my relative extrema. So let's see what's going to happen when you have a quotient rule. Well, let's look at the domain of that. Can 1 plus x squared ever be 0? No, because if I take a number x and square it and add it to 1, that's not going to happen. So the domain here is all real numbers. I don't have it where it would be undefined. But let's talk about the derivative. All right, we have the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus top, times the derivative of the bottom, over the bottom squared. Okay, so even though we have a fraction, that's never going to be zero. So it's not undefined anywhere, but it could equal to zero. So if I take that derivative and set it equal to zero, and the easiest way to solve for x would be to cross multiply, then zero times anything is zero. I'm going to bring my x squared to the other side, take the square root, and don't forget my plus or minus 1. All right, so I have two critical numbers. That gives me three regions to test. So I have a negative of a negative 2 squared plus 1 over my denominator. All right, and hopefully you'll know that that denominator is always going to be positive, no matter what I stick in. All right, so the numerator is going to be 0 squared plus 1 over something positive. And then I have negative of 2 squared plus 1 over something positive. So let's see, that's going to be 4 with a negative. That's negative 4 plus 1. That's negative 3 over something positive, which is negative. That's 1 over something positive, which is positive. And again, I have negative 3 over something positive which gives me a negative value. Again, you don't have to know what the derivative equals to. You just have to know if it's negative or positive. And if you want to know, punch those into a calculator, get a decimal. The idea is you just need to know negative or positive. So let's see. This tells me it's negative, positive, the negative. 
So I have a relative minimum and a relative maximum at negative 1 and positive 1. So I'm going to come evaluate the function at f of 1 and f of negative 1 right here. So I have 1 on top of 1 plus 1 squared. And then I have 1 on top of negative 1 squared. Same exact thing. So those are my relative extrema. This one is a minimum because it's a low. This one is a maximum because it's a high. All right now let's look at one that has a fractional exponent. So taking the derivative. And again, we want to take any negative exponents and put them in the denominator. And the reason why you want to do that is so you can see is the function or derivative undefined. All right, well, as we talked about it, this fraction is never going to equal to 0. But if I let x equal to 1, then it would become undefined. All right, so you just set the denominator equal to 0 and find that value. And so my only critical number is 1. That's where this is undefined, where the derivative is undefined. Notice the function was defined for all real numbers. But once we took that derivative, it created that fraction. So I'm going to pick a number to the right and to the left. So I'm going to put 0 right there. All right, so let's see. What do I have? I have 2 over 3 times negative 1 to the 1 third power. The one-third power is the cube root. The cube root of a negative is a negative. So what I have here is something positive over something negative. That's a negative number. Here I have 2 over 3 times 1 to the one-third. Everything's positive, so this is positive. So my derivative went down and went up. That would be a relative minimum. And again, I have to go back up to the original function and evaluate it at that critical point of 1, which is 0. So this is going to be a relative minimum, a relative extrema. So let's go through that process again. We have to find the critical numbers of the function. And the critical number is where the derivative equals to 0 or does not exist. And this part is going to come in when you have something in the denominator, because you cannot divide by 0. And then we're going to determine the sign of the derivative to the left and to the right. And so if the derivative is negative, that means it goes down. If the derivative is positive, it goes up. And then you would get a relative extrema.